and steadfastness. And you are an example to the church. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Nearly 400 years ago, in the 1640s in Britain, they saw the rise of a new religious sect. The sect was led by an itinerant preacher named George Fox. These people became known as Quakers. Now, I know a little bit about Quakers, having been from Pennsylvania. You can imagine that uh, my uh, family history is full of uh, Quakers, and that would be uh, true. The Quakers got that name because during religious ecstasy, they would begin quaking and battling and convulsing. That's how they became known as Quakers. In the beginning, they taught that they were the restoration of the true church. They were true Christianity. After hundreds of years of apostasy, they were the true church. They also taught that God's revelation was discernible by inner revelation in what they called their inner light. Another distinguishing characteristic of this group, and one that has a bearing on my message today, and that is that they considered the sacraments as unnecessary. They considered the sacraments unnecessary. To them, the sacraments, they were external rites, and therefore inferior to true spirituality. In fact, they actually considered communion, the consecrated bread and wine, and the water of baptism, as hindrances to true spirituality. Now, the Bible teaches us that worship that is not decently and in order is not of God. God is not the author of confusion. Uh, when anyone tells you that the true church disappeared from the earth, run. <laughs> what, what, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. That's what the scripture teaches. Uh, all of our inner religious thoughts must be consistent with Holy Scripture or they are not of God. When people place inner revelation above the Bible, run. The Holy Spirit does not sow lies. And Scripture, not the inner light, is the infallible standard of our faith and practice. When a Christian teacher tells you that the sacraments are unnecessary, you should also run. <laughs> the sacraments are not vain. They're not vain ceremonies or rites. Christ himself instituted baptism and Holy Communion. Christ Jesus gave his church no vain ceremonies. In our Gospel lesson today in Mark uh, chapter 7, beginning at verse 31, we see Jesus doing what Jesus still does today, and that is healing. Are any of you in need of healing today? Spiritual healing, the healing of your body from sickness or disease, the healing of your mind and spirit from oppression, the healing of your heart from neglect and abuse, then you should listen carefully to what I am about to say today. As Ken Marks read in our Gospel lesson, Jesus had left the area of Tyre and Sidon and come to the area near the Sea of Galilee. And they brought him a man that was both deaf and unable to speak. They had faith that Jesus could heal the man if he would only put his hands on him. They had faith that Jesus could heal the man, and it tells us that Jesus did touch the man. In this case, he healed him after looking to heaven, looking to heaven, saying something, sticking his fingers in his ears, and putting his own saliva on the man's tongue. Immediately, the text tells us that the man could both hear and speak. And people, as the King James tells us, were beyond measure astonished. I would say so. Have you ever considered why Jesus healed the man this way? Why did he choose to lay his hands on him? Why did he choose to stick his hands in the man's ear? or touch his tongue with his own spit. 
think about it. Why would he do it that way? We know that he could have just healed the man without saying or doing anything, couldn't he? He could have. If in his mind he determined to heal the man, he would have healed him. But Jesus did things, and he said things, to heal the man. Why? Have you thought about this? I wonder if you've ever wondered why the Lord Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper Holy Communion. He could have done something else. He could have decided that such external things were completely unnecessary to true spirituality, to people who were truly spiritual. There are a lot of people out there that think that way this day. Modern Quakers, if you will, they think that they are so spiritual that they do not need the very sacraments, the sacraments of Christ, that he said we must have. Why are they necessary? Consider uh, the epistle of St. James. St. James' epistle instructs priests to anoint the sick with oil. Why not just pray? That would be more spiritual, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Why the sacraments? Why the sacraments? In order to understand this, we must first go back to creation. Remember that God created the heavens and the earth, and he created man out of the dust of the earth. And after he created man out of the dust of the earth, what did he say about his creation? It was good. It was good. God considered his creation good. The physical world before the fall of man, what he created was good. Many religious movements and philosophies of man through the ages have called the physical world bad or inferior. In contrast, the God who created it said this physical world is good. Even in man's fallen state, there were physical sacrifices for sin used in the acceptable worship of God. All through the Old Testament, we see God uses physical things as a means of grace for his people. For example, consider the people of the Exodus and the brazen serpent. The brazen serpent which was lifted up in the wilderness and all those suffering the plague that had beset them could look with their eyes to the brazen serpent and be healed by God. And of course, there's the tabernacle, the temple, and their elaborate structure and service. All these things were what? Very physical things, weren't they? Then, when in the fullness of time God brought forth a son, it wasn't a spirit child. It was the second person of the Trinity incarnated, born of a woman, God in the flesh, very physical indeed. The incarnation is something that I don't believe we can stress or study or meditate on too much. If you want to grow in the faith, I would encourage you to contemplate, read, and study the incarnation. One of the reasons I grew to appreciate the sacraments, uh, not coming from an Anglican background, is because I came more and more to appreciate the truth of the Incarnation. God taking on human flesh. And importantly, it wasn't a merely spiritual sacrifice for sin that Jesus made. It was the physical sacrifice of his body. Indeed, Evan, even as we look forward in time, Christians do not look forward to a time in which they will be disembodied spirits, do they? What is it that we look forward to as Christians? The resurrection, when we will have resurrection bodies. If flesh, the physical body, was inherently bad, Jesus would not have wasted his time to redeem it, would he? Now here's the why of the sacraments. In the sacraments, we see in a physical means the grace of God. 
the spiritual reality of the sacraments is administered in a physical way to physical fleshly men. It may be the pouring of water, the eating of bread, and the anointing of oil, the laying on of hands. These are all physical actions which convey the grace of God. We are created beings with a physical body. And so God gives us a physical way to receive His saving and healing touch. Doesn't that just make sense? If we didn't have physical bodies, we wouldn't have a need for the physical touch from God, would we? But we do have physical bodies. And so He has provided for us. There's another reason that God instituted the sacraments. The sacraments are His ordinary means of conveying His grace to men. Think about our Gospel lesson again. If the man Jesus healed just suddenly started hearing and talking, the healing might be ascribed to an accident. The power of positive thinking or the work of someone or something else, right? But Jesus, by healing the man in the way he did, God was glorified. God was glorified. Jesus confirms this as his reason in John chapter 9. After healing the man born blind, Jesus uh, said the healing was a revelation of God's ways in him. God in Jesus Christ lets us know who has healed, that is, who has done the healing, and who gets the glory by making a deliberate physical act in order to show God's grace to man. The church follows Christ's example and command herself. And the church, under his order and with his authority, makes deliberate physical acts as the means by which she conveys God's grace to men. So there is no doubt who gets the glory, right? God gets the glory. This is why we have sacraments. They are deliberate acts in the physical realm that convey God's grace to his physical creatures so that they know that their grace comes from God through Jesus Christ. When you were baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and brought from death into life, it was a deliberate physical act that conveyed the grace of God and brought you into a new life in Christ. That is the sacrament. We are physical creatures and God ministers to us as such. You deny the physical means that God has supplied for you, you are denying how God made you. You need the physical touch from God because He made you a physical being. Makes sense, doesn't it? There are seven sacraments of the church. Two are called the dominical sacraments, baptism and holy communion, because Christ Himself during His ministry uh, on earth instituted these. The other sacraments are called uh, that are taught in Scripture uh, do not necessarily apply to all Christians. For example, if you're not sick, then you don't need the anointing of the sick, right? The other five sacraments are confirmation, unction of the sick, confession, marriage, and holy orders. These are the means by which God uses to bring His people healing and His touch. Do you want God's blessing? Do you want God's healing? And to wait, the way to experience His healing is the sacraments. No one will wonder where your healing came from, will they? They will all know that it came from God. No one will wonder who should get the glory. Everyone will know that God should get the glory. This is why we have sacraments like the deliberate physical act of sticking fingers in a man's ear and touching spittle to his tongue. The sacraments are deliberate physical acts that allow God to bless us, to touch us, to love us. This is one of the reasons why those who say they can be a Christian 
and not sharing the Eucharist and worship of God's people are deluding themselves. Why should God bless or heal such a person? Towards what end? Do you want the blessing of God? Do you want the healing of God? Then look to the way that honors Him. Look to the way that honors Him. The way that honors Him are the sacraments He has given His church. The sacraments. Amen. 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 Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how He said, It is more blessed to give than to receive.